Hey guys, so if you've followed me for a while, you'll probably know that I have an anxiety disorder. And for me, driving and anxiety is <sighs> terrifying. Uh, driving is probably where most of my anxiety is centered around. And so over the last couple of years, I've had to come up with a lot of techniques to learn how to cope with my driving anxiety. And I thought I would make a video sharing those because I've spoken to quite a few people who have driving anxiety as well. So I know it's not just some weird thing that I have. Um, as always though, I'm not a medical professional, sadly, so please take any of my advice with a really big grain of salt. So the first thing you're going to want to do to help with your driving anxiety is have a safe person with you. If you have somebody that you trust, somebody maybe that's seen you freak out before and they know your quirks, you're going to want to take them in the car with you. Obviously the best part about this is that if you start to freak out and you really feel like you can't cope, you have somebody there that can take the wheel for you. So in terms of safety, it's probably one of the best options. Um, the problem with it though is that eventually you're going to have to drive on your own. But because getting over driving anxiety is all about repetition, it's kind of like getting your license in the first place. You want to get as much experience under your belt as you can. If you want to have someone with you for the first couple of drives, then that's great. If that's the thing that helps you get out and get behind the wheel, then do that. Um, unfortunately for me, it's not something that works. I don't know why, but if I have somebody in the car with me, my anxiety is just through the roof. So I have to avoid doing this, but if it works for you, great. Uh, but if you're like me and you know you feel weird with somebody else in the car, don't worry, there are plenty of other techniques that you can use. So one of the techniques that is really important, I think, is using affirmations. I have talked about affirmations so many times before, but that's because I think they are just useful in every area of life. I think if you're not doing affirmations, you should be. Um, I know there are some people that think that affirmations are a really like kooky thing to do. And I guess because, you know, in movies, people who are standing in front of the mirror saying they love themselves get kind of made fun of. Um, and some people think it's a wanky thing to do. But the thing is, a lot of people don't realize that you are doing affirmations every day, whether you realize it or not, because a lot of our affirmations are subconscious. Everybody has that voice in their head that, um, you know, brings in self-doubt and says negative things like people might have a voice that says, um, you know, what if they don't like me? What if they, he or she doesn't love me? You shouldn't go after that job that you want because you might fail, um, etc, etc. Whereas with an anxious person or someone who has driving anxiety in particular, that voice is going to be saying things like, you're not going to make it, um, you might crash and die, you might vomit. Uh, you know, like just nothing good is going to come from this. Um, it's going to be terrible and you'll never be able to leave the house again. And if you suffer from anxiety, which you probably do because you're watching this video, you'll know that we listen to that voice more than any other voice. So the, per the voice in our head that says you can't do this is the voice that we will take as gospel. So the reason affirmations are good because it's a way of... Um, you know, consciously redirecting your thoughts to something positive instead of something negative. So you want to say things like, I'm a strong and confident person. I love being in the car. I love the feeling of freedom I get. And if it's really a push for you to say things like that, you know, if you feel like a complete idiot saying, I'm a strong and confident person, then say it in a way that you would say it. If you want to say, I'm a rock star, then say it that way if that's what makes you feel more comfortable. If you feel fired up from saying it, then that's what you should say. And the thing is, if you say these affirmations enough, then every time you think a negative thought, you're instantly going to go, hang on a minute, that's a negative thought, and you're going to add something positive to it. So you're going to be like, you know, the voice in your head will say, I don't think I can do this drive, and you're instantly going to go, I'm a strong and confident person. And the more you get into the habit of it, the more positive talk you're going to have in your head every day instead of negative talk. And that is just going to make a huge difference in not only your driving, but in your life in general. If you are not using affirmations, get on it. I strongly recommend that as soon as you get in the car, you have like maybe a list of affirmations on your phone. Just check those before you start driving. Look in the rearview mirror, say your affirmations. And then as you drive, keep saying them. I like to make up affirmations as I'm driving along. Um, <laughs> some of that don't always make sense, but I just like to make things up as I'm going and being, you know, I say things like, I love being in my car. I love driving my car. I love the feeling of freedom it gives me. And I love being in my car. You know, I just, I try and make driving sound like I'm really enjoying it. And eventually I, I tend to believe that. 
The next technique that's really helpful that I use all the time is breaking the drive up into manageable pieces. So if you are at home and say you need to go somewhere like the doctor's office and it's 20 minutes away and you're thinking, I can't manage to drive 20 minutes away. There's just no way, it's way too far. Stop. Before you start freaking out about driving 20 minutes away, you just wanna to say to yourself, all right, I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna to drive to the next street. And once I get there, if I'm feeling okay, I'm gonna to drive to the next street. Once I get there, if I'm still alive, I'm still coping, I'm gonna to get to the next intersection or the next traffic lights or you know, the next, I don't know, park bench or something. You just wanna keep making the trip into these little manageable bites instead of making it this whole big scary thing that you can't do. The thing with anxious people is that we tend to underestimate our capabilities and we tend to overestimate everything else. So if I have to go somewhere 10 minutes away, I make that drive seem like it's like an hour long drive and I overestimate everything that's gonna go wrong in that drive and I completely underestimate the fact that I'm capable of driving 10 minutes away. So instead of thinking about it being 10 minutes, I just hop in the car and I go, all right, I'm gonna drive down the end of the driveway and then I'm gonna keep driving and I'm gonna keep driving and I'm just gonna see how far I can get instead of saying I have to get to this certain point. This is gonna make your driving anxiety a lot easier to cope with and it's gonna not make you feel so overwhelmed when you get in the car about where you have to go. Don't think about your destination, just think about the journey along the way. Actually, that's a little handy hint for life in general. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey, it's about how you get there. Another tried and true technique that always works for me is using distraction. I usually listen to motivational tapes when I'm in the car, um, I listen to TED talks or I'll just search YouTube for you know motivational, inspirational talks. I listen to audiobooks, I love listening to Tony Robbins audiobooks. Um, and if that fails, I will listen to music. A lot of the time I have my toddler in the car, so I'm just like, like singing nursery rhymes to her. Um, but if she's not in the car, I can put on like my old high school tunes, like Taking Back Sunday, and I can just sit there and like rock out. And at first I'm really anxious and really nervous and I'm just not feeling the, the tune, but- There's a place off Ocean Avenue, where are you? But by the end of it, I'm like completely into it and you know, just look, I probably look ridiculous in the car. So whatever your distraction poison is, obviously you're driving so um, you don't want to listen to like a hypnosis recording or anything like that, but you know, your favorite song, put that on, put on something on YouTube that really inspires you to listen to, put on your favorite audiobook. If Harry Potter is your favorite book, put that on and listen to it. The idea is, is to get out of your head and to get into something else. The next technique is all about redirecting tension. Pig. Excuse me. Pig. Oh wait. I film in front of the window because of the light and then Pig gets all excited and like growls over on the walls past and there are people constantly walking past. So excuse the interruptions. The next technique, as I was saying, um, is called redirecting the tension. And I think I actually learned this from Tony Robbins. Um, but basically, as someone who suffers from anxiety, tension for me instantly means fear. It means panic. It means like cancel everything. I can't go out. I'm too tense. Um, but the thing is, tension doesn't have to mean anxiety. It doesn't have to mean fear. You can be tense when you're excited. You can be tense when you're really looking forward to something. You can be tense when you're really, really happy. You know, I remember when I went to see the third Lord of the Rings movie and I was so excited about it coming on that I was like, oh, and I was like gripping my, um, you know, what do they call the armrests, sitting there gripping those and just going, oh yes, I can't wait for this. So I was super tense then, but it wasn't because I was anxious. But it's kind of like my brain has forgotten that and just all tension now means anxiety. So what you want to do to reverse that is when you're in the car and you start feeling, you know, your hands gripping the steering wheel, your hands gripping the steering wheel really tightly and you start gritting your teeth and your stomach tenses up and just your whole body starts to get really hard and, you know, and then you start thinking, oh God, I'm getting anxious. Instead of thinking that, what you want to do is you want to break into a big, big smile and it feels really, really weird and you probably feel like you look stupid. it is 
is that you're reminding yourself that tension isn't anxiety. Tension means other things as well. And actually the best time to do this is when you're not in the car. It's to practice it before you get in the car. But, you know, we're, <laughs> I'm really bad at practicing things until I actually need to use them. So often I would do this in the car instead of anywhere else. But the idea of it is to, to remind yourself tension doesn't mean anxiety. Tension means so many other things. So eventually if you do it enough times, when you're in the car and you start feeling the tension, it doesn't automatically send this signal to your brain going panic. You know, you don't have that instant fight or flight response. You just, you just feel tense and you notice tension for what it is instead of it being a reason to panic, if that makes any sense at all. You know what, if you want someone to explain that better, I would recommend going and watching Tony Robbins videos. I probably didn't do a very good job of that. Another technique that's really helpful is answering those what if questions. You know those what if questions like, what if I panic? What if I freak out? What if I vomit? What if I get stuck in traffic? What if I can't make it there? We leave these questions go unanswered and that's the thing that makes us freak out. It's the unknown of what might happen. So what you wanna do instead of letting the unknown be some terrifying thing, is you wanna answer those questions. What if I panic? Well, probably you're gonna have a panic attack. You might sit there with, you know, panic turning around in your gut for five or 10 minutes and then the panic attack will subside like it always does. It won't kill you like it never does and you'll go about, you'll go about your way. If you vomit, you might stop the car, um, you might get out, vomit, and you know maybe someone will stop to help you. I know I would stop to help someone if I saw them vomiting on the side of the road. Maybe not, maybe you can call someone to come pick you up if you don't feel like you can drive, or you'll just get back in the car, you'll keep going along your way, or you'll go back home. Um, you know, what if you get stuck in traffic? Well, if you get stuck in traffic, that's a perfect time to start talking about your affirmations, to maybe change the audio book, to do your tension smiling technique. Traffic is actually a really good time to just regroup and get a grip on yourself. So if you get stuck in traffic, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. And as for the question, what if I don't make it? Then you don't make it. It's no big deal. I know that I always tend to think that if I don't make it somewhere, it's like the end of the world. It's catastrophic. But if I don't make it, I don't make it. I either go home, regroup, and try again in an hour, or I go back the next day or the next day. It doesn't matter. It's really not as big a deal as we make out. So answer those what if questions. Don't let them be an unknown thing. Don't let them scare you. Say, well, if what if this happens? Well, this is what's gonna happen. And then it'll give you some of the power back and it'll actually make you realize, I can manage, I can cope. That should be one of your affirmations. Whatever is thrown at me, I can cope. Or I will handle it. Or I am handling it. A quote that I really love is the one that says, I have survived 100% of my worst days so far. And when I'm having a really bad time, I think of that quote and I go, you know what? I, a panic attack has never killed me. I have never ever had a, a moment happen in my car where I simply couldn't cope and I spontaneously combusted. You know what I mean? Like I've always survived. So my fears are pretty unfounded at the end of the day. It doesn't mean they're any less real, but they're unfounded. Last but not least, you really wanna celebrate every trip you do. It doesn't matter if you feel like it was a failure, maybe you only went down the driveway, maybe you went somewhere five, 10, 20 kilometers away. Whatever trip you did, celebrate it, acknowledge it, give yourself credit for getting out there. It's an amazing thing to try and conquer your fears. If you're someone who has an anxiety disorder or you suffer from anxiety, you maybe have to conquer your fears a little bit more than the next person, but that's making you stronger. So it's an amazing thing to have to cope with your driving anxiety and I give a big virtual hug to everyone who's going through it right now because I know it's a really, really hard thing to do. But congratulate yourself. Don't forget to acknowledge all your strength and all your perseverance and keep at it while we're on the topic of perseverance. Don't give up. You will get back in the car again. You will drive again. No matter what happens, you'll make it through. That's it for me guys. If you want any more tips on how to manage with anxiety, you can check out my other videos or my blog anxietymama.com. Hope you're all having a really great day. Bye. Uh.